Nothing ever happens in Eagle River. It's very quiet, very respectable. Usually, nothing happens. On Tuesday, October 15th, just past 9.30 a.m., APD dispatch received a report of a baby found by a citizen in Turner Park, which was not breathing. Yesterday, a grand jury indicted 24-year-old Ashley Ard on a single count of murder in the second degree. What she's facing is anywhere from 20 to 99 years. But believe you me, there are some gaping holes in this case. How convenient is it for Ashley to deliver the baby, get the baby to the park, and get back home all during the time that her husband, Kennard, is gone? This was not my daughter. To run around and do all that that they said that she did with the amount of blood that she lost, you know, is more to it than this. Do you know if she was pregnant? Not at all. Did he see what was going on? Did he get rid of her baby? Good afternoon and welcome to Your Kind of Alaska. I'm your host, Larry Earp. And here's my warm welcome to today's topic. Ashley Ard is currently in prison, awaiting trial for the murder of her newborn baby. A journalist from the UK is convinced there is more to the story. But on social media, the public have already made up their mind. Since Ashley was arrested, the public have been keen to see her condemned. Her fate will depend on defence lawyer Rex Butler who is notorious for taking on cases that others won't. Ooh. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm gonna have to come in here once a week. <laughs> How tough would you say this case is with Ashley? Well, certainly not something to look forward to. A case like this, with the kind of blowback that we're going to get in the community, short of, you know, the death penalty, which we don't have in Alaska. This is a uh, top five case in terms of stress relation. You know, I don't want her getting old in, in, uh, in a jailhouse. First, I've got to find a way to get Ashley out on bail. That's going to be the tough one. That's, that's a high bar because most people charged with murder don't really get out on bail. It's my experience that people who are out tend to fare better in the court system than people who are locked up throughout the process. You know, people like to believe that the person who did the crime always does the time. Come on. 
The evidence in this case tells another story. There's blood everywhere. But there's no blood in the car. Kenneth's pistol is still in the car. So what's going on here? Maybe he decided he didn't care what happened as long as that baby wasn't there. I don't understand. Why wouldn't he want the baby? Once she had given birth, he must have figured out it wasn't his baby. Wasn't Kenneth's baby? No. It's definitely not Kenneth's child. No way. He just got back from Afghanistan. He's only been around six months. And uh, this is a full term baby, nine months. There was trouble at that address in that household. News coverage of the case has never raised any questions over who the baby's father was. Hello, no one is available. Get your call. And Kennard has never spoken to the press about his relationship with Ashley. Oh, hi, Kennard. I sent you an email the other day. We'd really like to, to try and meet you. It was a relationship that began thousands of miles from Alaska. Um, I'm from Portsmouth, Virginia. I did my freshman, sophomore, junior year at Norcom. I wasn't part of the in crowd. I wasn't what the guys wanted, you know what I mean? Like, they wanted the more, like, grown-up looking girls. I was told I'm cute, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't want to be cute, you know? Like, I want to be fine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was a good girl. Ashley joined the Army after graduation from high school and, like Kennard, was stationed at Fort Benning Military Base, Georgia. We met in the Army, and he was very charming, very respectful. At first, everything was good. Um, we were just like a normal couple. She loved him, but Ashley was just, she was full of love. She has such a big heart. While at Fort Benning, Ashley also met Deanne, and the two immediately became best friends. We were both chaplain's assistants in the, in the Army, and um, we had a good time. We had a good time. I don't think we were supposed to, though. <laughs> but we did. I just remember she was so happy. At least it seemed like she was happy. We spent all our time together. Um. We hung out, we went on dates, went to the movies. I mean, we were just, you know, we were in love. I thought, we, anyway. And then, I don't know, I don't know what happened, something changed. You know, pictures hide a lot. People can portray what they want to do a picture and a smile. But as time went on, I knew better. I knew my friend. 
So I knew she wasn't as happy as social media made her out to be. She would call me in tears because she found clear proof that he was cheating. And she'd be like, I'm done. I'm done. And then she wouldn't be done. And then they'd be back together. And then there'd be that phone call. He cheated again. OK, how'd you find this time? Oh, he left his Skype open. And she would literally like, here's my laptop. Here it is on Skype, like woman after woman after woman. It was like, no one cheats this much. And the way she would find out was just like careless. Like you didn't even care enough about her to even try to hide it. Despite her friend's concerns about the relationship, nine months after meeting, the couple had news. One day she called me to her battalion. I get there and <laughs> she said, um, can I propose? You know how you want to be happy for your sister? <laughs> you just want to be happy. I could not be happy. And I just was, I was just honest with her. I said, I don't, I don't think you should. I think it's a bad idea. I think that he's pretty much showed you who he is and you should believe him. Ashley and Kenneth got married in October 2011. A month later, she became pregnant with their first child. All she wanted was to be happy. To be happy, married, just like a Cinderella movie. I think she thought that he was going to change for the best, but that's not what happened. He got worse. Didn't come home, sometimes weeks. After she got pregnant, he was just so mean. I would be on the phone with her, and I would hear him in the background um, yelling, you're fat. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you get to eat everything in the house. He just had no care for this woman who was literally carrying his child. There was just um, different women. Um, I mean, there was um, us getting into physical altercations, um, name calling. But I was so wrapped up in loving him. Did you love him a lot, Ashley? I did. I don't want to date anything for him. And my family knows it. A special tribute today at Fort Benning for the wives of about 250 soldiers. All of the wives are pregnant, and in almost every case, they're scheduled to give birth while their husbands are fighting in Afghanistan. Whilst pregnant, Ashley received news that Kenneth was going on tour. The husbands of most of the women in this room will deploy to Afghanistan in June. For women like Ashley Ard, who has enlisted herself, that of, means you know, she'll have her baby job. alone. Deployment is part of our job. This is what we signed up for. So. But it's got to be tough when there's a little baby on the way. Uh, it's very tough. So being a wife, a mother, and a soldier, it's very hard. I remember seeing the news report. She said that she wanted to have one of those 50-year marriages that was for good or for bad, for rich or poor, through sickness and health, through death to its part. And I get that. I always felt that I should stay because I didn't have my mom and dad. Um, my mom and dad weren't together, so I felt that, hey, by any means necessary, I'm going to do what I need to do to keep my family together because I want her to have both parents. Ashley was raised by her mom, Barbara, in a neighborhood just outside of Portsmouth. I used to stay right there, 2506. I used to stay right here. That's community housing. 
Was that tough? Oh, yeah. I was a single parent, and I had two girls, and I had to be safe. But it wasn't the, the lowest of the get. I mean, it wasn't the lowest. And uh, yeah, I just I had no choice. I just did work and did the best I could. I didn't make a whole lot of money, but I just did the best that I could. Ashley's dad, was he there for her? No, not really at all. Not at all, so. She wanted a relationship with her dad, but you know, he wasn't really interested. You know, he he just wasn't. Is that why she wanted the perfect marriage with Kenner, do you think? I don't know. I do believe that she wanted somebody to love her. She just wanted somebody to just care something about her and just love her for her. You know, nothing, no tricks, no nothing. Just love her for her. And her daddy wasn't there to steer her in the right direction to guide her, to, to show her, well, listen, men won't, do, you know, to try to tell her about yeah. men. It's like she was just out there on her, you know, on her own. And I didn't always, I wasn't always in healthy relations, you know, because sometimes I chose the wrong guys myself. After Ashley's father left, Barbara introduced a number of different men into their lives. Some of those relationships became violent. People make mistakes. People make mistakes. There was a time when I was drinking and partying, and I may not have been there emotionally. My relationship to mentally abused. There was drugs involved. I often wonder, did that make her accept some things in her relationship? Because she saw what was going on. Did she see me accept things and then she accept things, you know? It's a nice car. It's a 92, and it's only got 27,000 miles on it. You know, this is the thing. I've got three daughters. And so, you know, as a father, you know, you have a real understanding about what you want and what you don't want for your girls. And the one thing you don't want is a player. You know, Kennard's a player. And a player is uh, the worst kind of man for a woman. You know, I would know, of course, because when I was young, I was a player myself. You know, I just wish we could find a way to get Ashley out of custody for her trial. But I'm certain if she were out today, she would be in his arms if he would allow it. You know, and despite the pain that he puts her through. I see it all the time. One spouse taking the heat for another spouse. Rex is still gathering evidence from that night to try and prove Kennard's involvement. This came in discovery from the state. What are you watching? Well, I'm looking at the tape of the scene that night. You know, the park on the corner here from a home security camera. Take a look at this. Okay, right there. 
That's Ashley's car, coming from the direction of the apartment. Because of the position of that camera, we can't see who's getting in or out of that car. You can't tell who's driving the car from... No, you can't tell. Or you can't even tell if it's a female or a male, much less who's driving it. You, you, you just see an arm in the window of the car. Factor in the timeline that night. Oh, it's entirely possible and probable. Kenner could have been the one driving that car. Could have been the one putting that baby in the park. But this camera, it's a point that doesn't work for either the prosecution or the defense. It's just one of those pieces of information that's just out there. As no one witnessed Ashley's car stopping at the park that night, the police investigation relied largely on the interviews with Ashley and Kennard. Did you know that she had just had a baby? Did I know? Did you help her in any which way, shape, or form to get rid of this child? No, I did not. We're not going to call you a liar. One of the things that we use as a tool to assist us is a polygraph test. That's something you'd be willing to take. Okay, get back to see guys. Now, Kennard never took that lie detector test, and he was never interviewed again. You know he was protected from day one by the military, and he still is. Kennard is under no obligation to speak to us at all. He doesn't want to speak to us. Although the police have now closed their investigation, questions still remain around Kennard's version of events. The only person close to Kennard who is willing to speak is his aunt, Kim. You're not gonna smile today. You're not gonna smile today, Benson. Let me, teeth, let me see the baby teeth, Benson. Are you and Kennard really close? Um, well, I've been in his life since he was born. Sometimes I, I look through my phone and it's, uh, it's difficult to see all of the pictures of him. Recently, a lot has happened. He's just left. So he's left Alaska. No one could have ever told me that um, we wouldn't speak to each other. Wow. Why do you think your nephew walked away? Um, he just, he didn't want to talk about that night. Has your nephew ever sat down with you and told you exactly what happened? No. Never. Never. Well, I've requested that from him many times. And um, it's really just a simplified, sim simplistic type answer of she had the baby while I was at the airport. The baby's not mine. And um, 
<clears throat> I think a lot of people in my nephew's life have enabled him to a point where he doesn't have to speak about it. Is it worrying? It does, it, it is worrying. In fact, there's a lot of other things to talk about. Their relationship, I think, uh, was just a perfect storm of dysfunctional behavior that had been going on since he was in Afghanistan. In the summer of 2012, Kenneth was deployed to Afghanistan. It was his first tour of duty. Thousands of miles away, Ashley gave birth to their first daughter. She would spend the next five months raising her alone. When he was away, they would get on the uh, Skype or whatever. The conversations were never regular. There was always an argument. And I said, well, how can you just possibly be arguing? He's way over there. I would just try to encourage her, well, you know, if you're going to argue, then just, just choose not to answer the phone or whatever. But she couldn't. The alter altercations that we were having just got more and more intense. Um, I mean, the, the name calling and the verbal abuse, it got more and more intense every day. My friends, they always tell me to just leave him. They will always say, Ashley, you'll find somebody that'll treat you better. Um, or they'll, you know, say, I don't even know why you're still with him. But I felt so low. I couldn't. While Kennard was in Afghanistan, Ashley moved back home to Virginia to be close to her family. It was during this time that she told Deanne she had met up with a male friend from her past. Did she tell you that she had a fling with anyone? She admitted it to you? Yeah. And I didn't say, yes, go do it, but I didn't say, no, don't go do it either. I think I just really had a strong dislike for Kennard that even though I knew it was wrong for her to have a fling, I was kind of just like, you know what? You have been through a lot. I guess in a way I kind of regret that. Maybe things would have been different if I had said no. And then she had told me that she had gotten pregnant with the guy that she was on the fling with and I was like, man, it was supposed to be a fling. This is not good. So I said, okay, well, what do we do? What are we doing? And she said, well, I need to get an abortion. And she said, it would be really helpful if you would take me to the appointments. I, I'm against abortions, but I also believe that it should be the woman's choice. I don't think that that choice should be taken away from a woman to make that decision. Um, and because I love her and I support her, I told her, I said, okay, well, let's, let's, I'd rather you not, but if we're gonna do it, let me support you. But we never went. She put it off and put it off and put it off. And the next thing you know, Kennard was back. After seven months in Afghanistan, Kennard returned home. Pictures of them online showed a happy family, but the truth was very different. Ashley was pregnant with another man's child, and she suspected her husband was suffering from PTSD. 
came back from Afghanistan, had he changed a lot? A lot. Tell me what he was like when he came back. He was angry, he was short-tempered. Things would drop and make loud noises, he would jump. Um, he would get upset because he couldn't remember where things were in the house. Um, lights flashing triggered him. Just, he wasn't the same person. Were you frightened of him? Yes. He slept with a gun on the bed. I remember laying in bed one day and he had came in and we, I was watching a TV show and um, he had made this comment and he said that if you ever get pregnant by somebody else, I'll kill you. Two weeks after Kennard arrived home to Fort Benning, Georgia, Ashley went to inquire about an abortion. But Georgia is part of the Southern Bible Belt and one of the hardest states in America in which to terminate a pregnancy. She visited Sound Choices, a family planning clinic with polished marketing and a strong Christian ethos. Hello, my name is Denise, and I would like to introduce you to Sound Choices Pregnancy Clinic. In this place, we have seen 60,000 women, done countless pregnancy tests, and recently ultrasounds. More importantly, we have seen God intervene in the lives of every person who has come through here. Somebody else's story of redemption. Sound Choices like most family planning clinics in Georgia, does not provide abortions. Instead, on Ashley's visit, the pro-life organization gave her an ultrasound, which confirmed the fetal heartbeat, and they encouraged her to consider other options. I remember being like nine or 10 weeks. They told me that they didn't really believe in abortion. They were more so um, trying to keep the mother and the baby together. I just felt kind of like I didn't know what to do. Are you a religious person yourself? Yes, very religious. Since I was maybe like three or four, I was very active in church. I was on the usher board. I praised dance for 10 years. I was part of the choir. And, um, and then um, I became a chaplain assistant. I knew it's not right for me, you know, faith-wise, it's just not. So I, um, I was in a very bad place. One week later, the clinic called. Ashley told them she had changed her mind. She said, it's been taken care of. I didn't question that she didn't have an abortion because Ashley, since her and I have met, she's never lied to me. She's never um, made me question um, whether or not she was lying. She's never given me any indication or any reason to think otherwise. And so, I said, okay, so what about Kenner? He's being stationed in Alaska, and I'm going to re-enlist to go with him. <laughs> and that was, there was literally a pain that hit me so hard in the stomach. There was something about that just made me feel like this is not a good idea. No. No. 
After months of not speaking to the press, Kennard breaks his silence. What we're trying to do is put together, um, you know, what happened that night and how, you know, she talked about being madly in love with you and you were her husband. And I wouldn't like you to feel that other people have spoken and you haven't had your chance to say how you feel. put me through what I've been through. Of course it would piss you off. And you're not human if it didn't. The thing that bothers me is, it's just people that's, that's outside, you know, not knowing the inside of the story. Did you two have a physically tough relationship? Uh, she used to, grab on me, punch on me. I wouldn't hit her back because that's that's not me a man, you know, striking a woman. Until one night, you know, I was minding my own business, you know, drinking, having a drink. She comes outside and we are got an argument about something. And she hauled off and slapped me and it was a reflex. I slapped her back. And we both agreed. It was like, okay, stop with the foolishness. Then we gotta move on. Five months after Kennard returned from Afghanistan, he and Ashley were boarding a one-way flight to Alaska. She, uh, everything was fine. You know, we held hands the whole flight there. You know, she was looking out the window like, what the hell you got me into? Because she's never been to Alaska and I had. I was scared. I did not want to go. It was cold, it was snowing, it was raining. Um, I was thousands of miles away from home. We were moving thousands of miles away from my family. She behaved differently. No, no, not at all. He was just, he was running over me. I felt so low. I felt so weak. If you're in a relationship, if there's an issue, you bring the issue up. She should have told me. You couldn't tell. Ashley's a liar that, that likes to hide shit. When you keep secrets, crazy things happen. So what time, were you just walking through? Just walking my dog. Okay. How long ago did you originally find it? I just found it. Okay. Oh, I hear you, so it's fine. <laughs> I got kids that aren't much older than that, so. Heartbreaking. No excuse. No excuse for it. Someone's going to hell. He's working behind the scenes on this case. She would party with me, she would drink with me, she would work out with me. 
There's plenty of times where we were doing a lot of activities where a pregnant woman shouldn't be doing, and I was definitely blind to the madness. We're talking about a woman who is in the midst of extreme terror. <laughs> Ashley, when did you do? Friday. This family obviously has deep, deep rooted problems.